นะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระโตสัมมาสัมบุตตสะนะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตตสะนะโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตตสะพุทธานธรรมสังฆานะมะสามิอสิเรมิเตจริงจัวสิเรมิเตจยาทุกวันนี้เราจะมีการดื่มน้ำสดอีกครั้งดังนั้นฉันจะต้องพักผ่อนเพราะมันร้อนอยู่ที่บ้านใช่ไหมแล้วตอนนี้เราจะมีทีมของทอร์บี The Buddha's teaching, as we know, <coughs> there are so many Buddha before Gotama Buddha, right? And uh, every tradition, sometimes they they rely on certain sutta, on certain uh, doctrine uh, to say that they, they refer back to certain Buddha and. And of course, we're not going to dispute over who is real, who is false, and blah blah blah, this and that, right? And as we know, the Buddha's teaching is the teaching of nature, the fourth noble truth. That means. The truth, the first noble truth, is what sufferings or stress. Second one, the cause of suffering or the cause of your stress. And the third truth is the end of stress, and the fourth, the path or how to end this stress, this suffering. Now it has been, uh, as we are in this social. Media society nowadays, right? Has been, a, you know, a lot of platform has been arguing who is right and who is wrong and blah blah these sort of things, right? If you just to stick with certain inclinations, because certain people they have different background, different brought up, and uh, if we try to force fit certain thing which they don't have the access to. That knowledge again will be resulted in just, you know, verbal attacking each other, which is not encourageable and detrimental. Rather, we should focus more on individual practice, what we call karma, right? Because who knows, right? Everybody got different karma. Some people they have good karma, right? They meet up with good teachers, and uh, right practicing monk that shows them the way. And uh, some people who are not so fortunate got to go the round, the big round, and even that big round they can't even meet the real teaching. So we leave it that certain people, you know, when they don't accept something, we cannot force fit. Buddhism is something that. We just tell you the truth, the Buddha's teaching, right? And how to search for happiness within yourself in this world of samsara, in this birth age cycle of birth, aging, illness, and death, and that is more important, right? Rather than we try to criticize and attacking each other, uh, because like I say. Different people, different karma. We have these uh, Tibetan people up in the north of Himalayas, right? And Buddhism was spread into China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Southeast Asia. We have our Theravada teachings, right? 
and we should respect each other instead of attacking each other right because the buddha never encouraged us to attack if we are practicing we're practicing why to calm our mind that's more important the cause of our suffering the cause of our problem in life is because of our uninformed we're not informed and certain people when they're not informed they just follow and you can't blame them you just you can kind of say just uh, what to say that uh, pinpointing that oh, they are blind you know they are they are they have believe is faith right but rather we look at the quality that each teaching that they point to life practice that did we or one another way the doctrine or one part of the doctrine of the Buddha's teaching we put into practice, this is more important. Right? If you were to say that oh they must study the whole chronicles of the Buddha before you can practice. So what happened with the people who can't gain access to that? That's very unfair. And for people who go don't have times, you see? Again, we boil down to karma. Some people they have good access, they have good companions. And they can gain good uh, teachers to guide them and congratulations to them. These are the good people who have uh, cultivated good karma in the past. And this lifetime they can, they can of course, uh, be <coughs> good inclination and good contact. For certain people, just too bad. And we just leave them alone, right? We try to help them if they come and ask you. If people are, don't come to you, you try to spoon false feet, they can't accept it. And it will in the end ignite adverse effect. It do more harm than good. Right. Now, back to the real thing. What are the Buddha's teaching? There are so many in the Buddha's teaching. And what is ap applicable? To our daily life practice, this is very important in our this modern society now. We all know we are living a very fast moving digital world. Everything is so fast. You can get your message so fast, whether good or bad. Right? But we are living beings on earth. We have feet to walk. We need to take food. We have this body of ours that can feel. We have this feeling. We have this mind that we can think about. And we have this cognizant perceiving mind that we know things. Right. And of course, when we talk about the Buddha's teaching, then you would ask yourself in life, is it, is it forever very smooth? You know, all your wish always come true, or what? Right? You know the answer very well. Right? Deep inside your heart, each and every body, you know deep inside your heart. Nothing is permanent. But why we can't see that? Because our mind is so clouded. And our mind has been so clouded with all these great hatred and delusions. And that's the problems. Right? That's the problem. That's why in the Buddha's teaching, we emphasize so much about generosity we emphasize so much about precepts right the restraint of your action your speech and meditation to calm your mind right and this is what we have been working so hard right and for those people who are you know they are quite confused they don't know where to start with because the I say and they got to go through the cycle of what we call karma, right? They have to walk this long way, which, what to do? Because what you have committed, who knows in the past, right? Certain people, they are like that, what to do, right? Uh, that's why when we have, we know, we understand, then we, we will say that, yeah, we will try our best, right? To educate ourselves with the right view. 
And what do we know about right view? Right? Our right view is what? A lot of money, <laughs> big car, big houses, everything is so promising and uh, no failure in life. Right? Uh, we only believe in that. But in reality in life, that doesn't come in line, right? Everybody knows that. And we try to force ourselves so much. You know, because why? Because everybody is moving the same directions, right? And the Buddha is a wise man. Because with all this kind of material gain, right? Because of his past barami, the Buddha was able to see that no, it doesn't give him ultimate freedom or peace of mind. In fact, increase more greed, more hatred and more delusion. Right? And that's why when the Buddha left the kingdoms, left the comfort zone in search of the truth, happiness within the mind. Right? And that's why we are so fortunate in this uh, 2000 21 that the Buddha's teaching has still preserved because why the truth of the universe is never changed and what are the truth the impermanence of things right and the suffering of beings anicca tukkhang anatta right the non-self a lot of people they feel very offended or they can't accept that nah Buddhism is talking about all this thing that's not so Welcoming, they don't like that. They want smooth thing word. Right? But the Buddha doesn't say only suffering, but the Buddha give a formula. Right? How we can go about it? How we can solve our problem in our daily life? With people who always break the precept, you always kill, you always tell lies, you commit all this kind of of uh, what, sexual misconduct with womanizing or having all these you know uh, un unwholesome things about sex and uh, all this not honors with your livelihood telling lies and taking drugs you know, t taking what you call that uh, uh, alcohol uh, to make yourself drunken so that you don't feel they're in pain. And this is something that material thing can't help you. Right? A lot of people they try to find the escape route to materials gain and they never find it. They can never find it because it is not material. Material are something temporary. The real things is your mind. Right? Everything is just like a movie show. Our life you would look at it. It's like, like a movie show, right? And especially when we are at this COVID time, right? we've got to stress a lot about this COVID time because a lot of people has been very, very affected. And in the end, the result to all kinds of belief, right? Which is not the Buddha's teaching, right? And they, they believe that, oh, I must become a a vegetarian, yeah, my Buddhist, or I must become a, a, I must chant certain mantra, then I'm a Buddhist, uh, I must hold certain vow, then I'm a Buddhist, and a lot of things that the Buddha never encouraged or never say, but people formulated themselves. We call it the Terakata, also call certain teachers, they they follow their own kind of a promise or vow and they they try to impart this knowledge to the later generation and of course with the later generation not being informed of the real doctrine of the Buddha will be deviated from the true teaching of the Buddha right of course we're not going to touch on that it's just informations it's just a uh, 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 notifications or to uh, just to tell people that you know the real Buddha teachings is about the noble eightfold path is about sila samadhi panya you know your precepts 
the concentration concentration practice you got to calm your mind in order to gain wisdoms right take for example we're talking about hands on along the way right uh, a lot of people ask we were interviewed by a lot of uh, medias and they were puzzled that uh, what what is Buddhist monk trying to do what is trying to prove right we want to part of the Buddha's teachings right there's a long range of Buddha's teaching and part of it is what compassions and harmony within and this is very something we are very lacking in our society the compassion within yourself and the harmony within yourself why we say that the compassion within yourself because if you think about the way that we behave so detrimental to yourself do you think you are compassion to yourself do you think by advocating those kind of actions will increase your mind to be peaceful and happy to find a harmonious state of mind within yourself I doubt so right because why you kill someone or you kill certain being what is your mind state you're very happy no you feel very guilty you feel very sad remorse after that and when people talk about this thing you got this unhappy feeling that will arise within you so you see the impact so how can you feel how can you feel peaceful and harmony within if you kill no you can't find the peace within second thing we talk about Athena stealing thing the thought of stealing taking things not belongs to you the mind because of the greed or oh, certain iPhone certain products you don't have a lacking you want to do and people don't give you you start to have the thought arise in you you want to steal the minute the thought arise in you what you feel straight away your heart the palpitation bo -bo 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 -bo, straight away that right and you get excited why the next thing will you get caught why when you get caught who will get trouble so you see you put your yourself in a very dispute situation because why it's not you can't find peace you, you don't have the compassion to yourself because you're damaging yourself and the third third precept right sexual misconduct right you you are so getting used to commit all this kind of sexual misconduct and sometimes you scared that your girlfriend may find out or your boyfriend will find out your wife will find out your husband will find out you see all this palpitation all this uh, 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 my state this worry this stressful state of mind arise in you see how how can you find peace how can you f are you really loving yourself no no this is because we have been engineered by greed by this unwholesome state of mind hatred by this greed longing for more sex and this is what's going to happen to you and in the end you ended up with broken marriage right broken family who suffer right then you say that you're you can find peace no how can you find peace right and this is something real sorry with people who are feel offended with the state but this is something real we're talk, talking about the buddha's teaching right we're not talking about hypocrite teaching right and the fourth Musawada telling lies things that is not true right and what is the outcome right you feel unease you feel uneasy you don't find the peace within because you break the precept and you always try to create another lies to cover another lies in the end one day you get caught you can bluff one person at a time you can you can't bluff all the person all at all the time someone will cut your foot and that's it finish you see and where this thing happen right those remorse state of mind this regret this detrimental state of mind arise in view this stressful state 
Now who is the one who do all this action? Not us, ourselves. Not yourself. Yourself. It's you who do it. And who asked you to do it? Don't you know that you know the effect of what you're going to do? Yeah, maybe you don't know. But now you know. Right? So you should take the effort and determinations to correct yourself. If you say that you're a person who really have the compassion to yourself, to have to find a peace within yourself, the precept alone can help you a lot. And of course, the fifth one is what? Sura Meraya, that means no alcohol. You see, a lot of people, uh, they say it's okay, drink something, it's, it's good for the body, blah, blah, all kinds of excuses. And, uh, and from small dosage to big dosage. Uh, this is something, it's up to individuals. Right? Our duty is to inform you that this is not the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha's teaching is to you, if you want to find peace and happiness within yourself, if you're compassion to yourself, right? We don't talk about compassion to others first, to yourself first, right? You should observe these five precepts, right? And after which, you, you, when you are acquainted with the precept, you know, and when we start to do with meditations, right? Then you can really repeat this word, may I be well and happy, peaceful and happy, right? healthy and strong. Yeah? May I be free from animosity, free from oppression, free from hatred. And it doesn't feel that kind of contradicting feeling within yourself. Because when your mind has laid out the foundations of good foundations in which in line with the Buddha's teaching, you can really find a real peace within yourself. Right? That's why when on the way, when people ask us about, right, what is your walk all about? So we make it very short. It's for the peace and compassion to one's mental health and physical wellness. Mental health is of course like what it has been explained just now. So this is something it is very, very the scientific, I should say, because the minute we generate the thoughts of goodwill, you feel good straight away, right? And everybody knows it, everybody experiences it. If you start to do mindfulness training, right? And, and of course, now mindfulness has become a product. People are selling mindfulness like a product, right? In causes, and if you were to look at the Buddha's teaching, it's free. Mindfulness is something you need to put into practice. It's not something, a course that you go through, you get a certificate, and you start to, you know, you can teach people and blah, blah, blah. Uh, do Buddha's time? No, because we're talking about how can you eliminate the greed, the hatred, the delusion, within oneself how can it eliminate the ego right the ego the ego of oneself the attachment to name and fame right how can you detach yourself when you have been run down by other people top back by other people all those bad remarks about you, can you take it? Uh, this is something, it's a good test. Right? It's a very good test. Physically, it's very easy. Like I tell, you know, during the walk, if you're physically fit, you just walk. But this mental aspect of trainings, when you're under the kind of heat, the cold, the tiredness, you need this mental strength, these determinations, that doesn't dampen your spirits toward this purification of your own mind. It's a form of trainings, right? Because 
we don't talk. We walk the talk. We walk and then we talk. <laughs> right? You know, we just, just, just talk. If we just talk, right, it, it's the only book knowledge. But you walk the talk. And it's the real life engagements. It's outreachings because it's a hands-on thing in life. Right? With all this bodily ache and uh, this harsh condition of the weather. And it's a tough type of uh, hands-on experience for this mindset of trainings. And of course, some people might say, oh, this crazy guy, why are you walking? No? You know? They ask me, why you walk? I say, yeah, we want to walk because we want to train our mind. We want to see what are the extra mark can we go. We push to the fullest in our practice, the determinations that are you going to be dampened? Your spirit, your determination going to be dampened? If you are injured, if there is rain, if there are, you know, blazing sun, they scorching your skin, like the tiredness got you, you know, your nails that drop off, your skin that peels off, your blister, is that going to, all these hindrances going to dampen your spirit? And that is the count. That is the challenge that you got to face on. And this is something, what we call the accumulations of the barami. It's not only on the physical aspect, it's more of mindset, right? And again, along the walk, along the walk, is a kind of challenge, right? We don't know, but we are very blessed, again, right? And we are not as strict, right? We don't put on that backpack because I injured my back my neck because of the backpack and so that's why we walk and everything was up in the vehicle and just that walk I thought that oh without backpack I think it would be more easier <laughs> no it's the distance the long distance the impact on the feet and even without a backpack you can still can still feel the stressful state that has been built up the tensions on your leg the tiredness and you see how this when you practice the four foundations of mindfulness, how this body react, the feeling of pain, how this pain send the signals up to your mind, and how your mind is it still focus, move on, your de 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 determination is not dampened, or you're gonna chicken out. Also, this is something which is very very good test for each and individual who participated in this walk right uh, it's, it look easy it sounds crazy but it's something that very few people like to do to test for themselves right yes it's up in the mind but have we test the tested the mind have we go to the fullest or we just self-assume that, oh, Nibbana is blah, 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 so and so. The books say that. And we have attained. Now, who say, who, who say you attain? Who agree? And when you are being tested, when each individual being placed under certain circumstances, being challenged by this different situation, how your mind react? And this is very hands-on, right? Each individual is their own judge for themselves. Right, we don't have to need other people to say that we are good. You do the practice, you know for yourself. If your mind is calm down, your mind is calm, you know your mind is calm. If you, which is under the challenge of all these hindrances, has come along the way, and it, if your mind is unmovable and your determination is strive on, no backing up, well, that should be the way, right. And you need, like what the Buddha say, you know, in terms of what other people say, we're not going to care. In terms of how the body is going to react, of course we'll react accordingly, right? If we are tired, we rest. If we are sleepy, we sleep. 
If we're hungry, we eat. If we're thirsty, we drink. But aspect of the mind. Have we ever put ourselves in the kind of test? No, because human beings are very attached to comfort. They always like to dwell themselves in the comfort zone. And they say that we are sukha patipatha. We are the comfort uh, uh, practitioners. We don't have to go to that kind of extremes, right? It's not extreme. It's something that different people, different incarnations, different karmic link, different karmic trainings, and of course, I say from the start, I'm more of a hands-on. We don't talk so much. We do the walking, right? And of course. I want to give some advice to a certain group of people that don't get discouraged, right? That, oh, people talk back about us. People are not supporting us, and all sort of thing, because you must agree and accept the law of karma. One hand cannot clap. It takes two hands to clap to create a sound, right? Every karma, karma, every reactions, it comes with the cause and condition. What we are experiencing every day now, there's some, there's a cause and condition to it. Things don't just happen without a reason, right? And don't get disheartened with the good deeds that we are doing. Remember, we are accumulating. Our barami, our perfections. In this world of samsara, we are going to go through in this birth, aging, illness, and death is accumulations of your good barami. So never get disheartened, right? And if you think that oh, my teacher is incompetent, my teacher is uninformed, he is more on the hands-on, blah blah blah. That I say. There are books. There are a lot of books, a lot of cater talks, a lot of free knowledge you can obtain in the internet. Don't grumble, don't hesitate. Go and find out, right? But don't be a bookworm. And just get yourself and grasp with all this book knowledge, hands on. And practice, because the book can't help you. It's your practice is going to help you in your dead bed, in every second of your life. Right, one death or sickness or uncertainty strike you. How are you going to react to the situation? That is very important. Right, you can talk. You can say that oh no problem I'm prepared. Are you really prepared? Right? Are you really prepared? Right. Ah, uh, so we want to encourage people, all walks of life, that don't be disheartened. Right? Don't be disheartened that you're not practicing. You don't have the time and so forth, or you know. Don't try to give a lot of excuse next time, next lifetime, and uh, you know next opportunity. Are you sure there's a next lifetime for you as a human being? <laughs> Are you sure you're going to be born where there's the right teaching of the Buddha still around? Are you sure? <laughs> Why aren't you born in a place because of your good generosity? There's no Dharma, there's no teaching of the Buddha around. So what happened? So you must treasure with what you have now, right? Don't worry about oh, certain uncertainty in your life, right? If you're not going to grab hold of the opportunity now, you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And what happens if you die next moment? You're going to regret. So, if you don't die regretfully. Right. Make sure at the very least you practice generosity. You practice your precept, and you cultivate your mind. You can be very sure. Right. 
any odds we all odds come along the way this is part and parcel of life it's our duty to go to it face it and not run away from it because this is life right life has never been easy right some people's life are easy because they have their good cause and condition they cultivated but certain people it has not been easy even though they work so hard so in order for you to understand right you should understand more on your mind the meditation expect with the four foundations of mindfulness right whatever thing you do you can see that we are practicing four foundations of mindfulness because take for example like i say just now when your muscle get ache your blister is bothering you you see how your mind get distracted to your to your leg and how your mind grumble right and how your mind make believe that you should stop you should drive and you shouldn't walk and how your mind make story and you believe they make story and you stop and that's it in the end i better don't walk i better drive only and this is how this mic and chicken out right but on the other hand if you were to go the other way around challenge it give us a challenge well let's see right and uh think otherwise that well with this small blister is it going to kill me it's not going to kill us with this nail that is uh, uh have been uh, dead with all this water inside there i just pinch it through drain out the water is it going to kill you no right it is through real experience real practice then you can find that everything is life our mind has been bluffing us all the while right there for example we talk about the pain about sound when certain people say certain thing you start to believe it's don't be true and it turned out not to be true at all and because of our own assumption or what other people say they make a story to bluff you they make up the story to please you they make up the story to say thing you like to hear and you make believe by yourself and in the end you got so happy about it and it turned out to be false and in the end you say the shit <laughs> you be cheated <laughs> ah so who to blame you don't blame other people you should blame yourself why are you so like here you have a brain to think you have a wisdom why do you think about it ah huh? uh, you talk about eyesight and all this thing you got to be mindful when you are mindful then you can really see thing clearly right is rather to be careful to be alert careful and to be mindful at every step we go rather to be sorry because why any wrong move with the regret so this is what mindfulness is all about is to be you know be mindful be careful be very thoughtful whatever thing we do so that we won't be a slave to our self mixed story within our mind which we always believe it to be true and when thing doesn't turn out to be what we were expect it to be we feel sad you see that's why when the buddha talk about like uh, the 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 conditions for happiness right no conditions to all this the tremendous state of mind there's always a cause and effect to it cause and condition nothing happen without reasons right if you want true happiness within your mind then cultivate your mind cultivate meditations right meditations pawana means cultivate cultivate your own mind no one can do it for you right we read books to enhance our knowledge in the buddha's teachings right but we do it to sit and really meditate do the walk sit and meditate walking meditations so you can benefit from your own practice right and of course there are a lot of teachers 
which you can refer to and they are always very kind and compassionate to help you to answer your doubts right and last but not least and I was uh, requested by the organizers to highlight certain things but I think that certain highlight which only cause more divisions of thinkings and uh, more quarrel rather than goods right but again remember right uh, if you do things even though you think it's right but if you are against the buddha's teaching then it's not right you mustn't break the precept right sila samadhi panya is something you mustn't change it this is the essence of the Buddha's teaching, right? Do good, avoid evil, and purify your mind, right? Okay. We need to do blessing now, huh? Sapro gavini moto sapasanta bhavanjito sapave ramati kanto ni buto satuva bhavasa pedio vivanjanto saparo go vina satuma de bhavantara yo sukhindi ka Yoko bhava bhiva dana sivi sani ca bhuta pacha ino ca taro dhamma vantanti ayuhano sukhaya